These are what Mies Footwear calls the standard, and it's their first product that's custom designed for culinary environments. I've been wearing and testing these for almost four months now. I wanna share with you my thoughts about the build, the features, what they're like to work in. And yes, I spoke with the team at Mies Footwear to hook you folks up with a special offer that I'm gonna share at the end of this video. What is up folks, let's start with the unboxing experience here. And as a caveat, I should share that Mies is sponsoring this video, but they gave me exactly zero talking points. They actually told me to be as brutally honest as possible. And they're seeing this video at the exact same time that you folks are. Pretty minimal branding on the outside of the box. What I actually wanna talk about first is this graphic that you're greeted with, which gives you some pretty unique instructions for kitchen shoes, and that is to wash them. Yes, the standard from Mies have a pretty compelling design feature in that they're actually two pieces. An outer, which they call the shoe, which includes the flexible sole and then a stitched leather upper, and then a second part that they call the insole, which is removable, flexible, fully washable. I wanna talk about each of these pieces in detail just so that you can get a good look at them on screen. Let's start with the insole. This is what's gonna be the part that obviously touches your foot the most, so it's gotta be both comfortable and durable. You folks know that I love gear that comes in a red colorway, so let's start there. This is effectively a piece of foam, but it's not just any foam. It's called Rise, and it's sourced from a company called Bloom. It's an algae blended resin. Basically, that just means that this is a less environmentally harsh material, and a bunch of other athletic focused brands source from Bloom, which is a testament to the fact that the Mies team has a heavy background in making athletic gear, and they're bringing all of that knowledge into shoes made for us. And they literally call it that, this idea of culinary athletes. And to me, that makes perfect sense. We're on our feet all day, we're expected to perform at work, why not give us the type of gear that serves that kind of output? More on that whole philosophy in a second, but I wanna talk about the two sides of this foam piece. Piece. and the topography on it is pretty flat. For feet like mine, this is perfect. I know this kind of gets into subjective territory a little bit early, but for me, certain shoes feel like I'm standing on a golf ball inside of my clogs because their arch is so exaggerated. I know I called this foam, but it's not squishy, it's dense. It's got give, but it's firm, and the underside is flat and smooth. You can actually see the difference on these two insoles. One has been worn for about four months, this one has never touched a kitchen floor. This insole also has no real attachment points, no holes, no hardware, and what you see is what you get here. Back to the top side of the insole, you get some relatively shallow grid etching, which in my experience is good. I don't think that I would enjoy standing on something that's completely smooth like the bottom of this is. Moving up, stitched onto that, you have this neoprene upper, which is extremely flexible. And although there seems to be holes here, that results in more of a quilted effect than any sort of breathability function, but because you have airflow that can come out the top on the toe box, that makes it so that these don't get too hot. I was curious when I saw these for the first time if there would be any sort of heel or plate on the back here supporting this, but this is just completely flexible. I can fold it all the way down. And it features this high swoop up on the tongue here to give you something chunky to grab onto when you have to put these on. What I also noticed is it has these protective stitchings here on the areas where the stitching is potentially vulnerable to getting snagged on the top and the back as you remove this from the outer, which I can imagine would wear quickly over time if they didn't add in these protective details. Speaking of the outer, this is also incredibly flexible. If And if you're used to like the thick wood reinforced clogs, these are gonna feel completely alien because I can go loosey-goosey with this. I, you just saw me moving this around. And it's so surprising to me that when these are in, that's not how they feel. They don't feel kind of too flexible and like I don't have a firm grip on the ground when I'm wearing these and they're put together. It's kind of crazy. I already showed it briefly on screen, but the bottom does have this grid patterning on the inside. And that I can imagine allows for expansion and contraction of the insole foam. Flipping this over, looking at the sole itself, one look at this and you know that this is the slip resistant part, right? This is made from a material called elastoline and the texture changes based on those high touch areas of your foot. So you've got right here on the heel as well as near the ball of your foot. What I personally think is brilliant is the way that this pattern is constructed because listen, I bought those shoes that look like a New York City line cook got a hold of a King Trumpet mushroom, right? The super finely textured deep grooves, which sure are hella non-slip, but one step in a mucky puddle outside or if you accidentally step in some spilled puree on the ground, it ends up being disgusting. They are impossible to clean. This patterning on the standard gives you the non-slip character from being textured, but it's almost like they found the minimum effective depth that these needed to be in order to not become a food trap. I've got my worn pair here side by side with the fresh out the box pair so you can see for comparison, I didn't clean these at all before putting them on camera. It's kind of wild. All right, stitched onto the sole itself is this minimally embossed, gold rated by the leather working group black leather piece. It's relatively thin. It's not quite matte, but it's also not quite shiny. And there are absolutely no seams. This is a single piece, which absolutely makes for 
for easy cleaning. To show you how this performs, we took some frequent offenders, we dumped them on the shoes, let them sit for five minutes just so that this could give some time to sink in if they did in fact sink in, and then we just used a kitchen towel with warm water on it to see how easily things come off. We're just gonna play the montage, you can decide for yourself how these perform. Let's talk sizing here super quickly while I put these together. Mies has a constantly updating sizing guide on their website and they offer a great return policy. How I did it is that I knew that my size in Nike shoes was a 10 and a half. On their website that equates to an EU 44 and a half. Mies does EU sizing, which meant that I rounded up and got to 45 and they fit perfectly for me. I had no issues. In addition to that guide, they also have a constantly updating list of partner locations where you can go in, you can try them on in person, barring they have your size in store. So if you wanna try before you buy, that is an option. Okay. Now now that they're on, this is what they typically look like on me. I usually wear socks with some sort of merino in them, which makes my socks thicker. And that's another reason why I was okay going with the sizing of mine. So first things first, when these are in, they are in. I was super skeptical of these shoes at first because I didn't, doesn't Steve Jobs have that quote? He's like, every moving part of a product is another point of failure. But when you want these to stay together, they stay together extremely well. So when you put them on, you're not touching the outer at all. You're exclusively pulling from the insole to get your foot inside. And then once they're on, I was so sure that I would feel some kind of shifting, little gaps, anything that was gonna give it away that this was a shoe that came apart and I did not experience that. Because the magic is where the neoprene piece on the insole cuts off. You can try this for yourself as I describe this. You can put your foot on the ground and then if you extend your toes upwards, notice where the movement of your toes stops. And that's, for me, right where this neoprene piece cuts off. Said differently, your foot can't feel anything from here forward, which goes beyond a gimmick and just makes this wildly smart in my mind and allows this type of design to actually work. The only part that you can feel of this shoe is what's touching your foot, and then this is like the protective layer that goes on top. I was also curious how separating the two would be, and it's super easy. You don't need any tools to accomplish this. You just pull up and then you pull out. And I've personally never had them come apart as I'm wearing them because the downward pressure of you standing in them prevents that from ever happening. Speaking of separating them, you will separate these for one of two reasons. One is to wash the insoles, which is just done by filling a vessel with cold soapy water, hand washing them, and allowing them to air dry. Or something that I'm stoked to kind of co-announce with this video is the new bundle that Mies is offering. So remember back when I said Mies sees us chefs as culinary athletes, they said, hey, take basketball players, for example. They literally rest their shoes or they swap their insoles because as they're playing, the foam compresses through extended wear and movement, and you need to give that foam time to expand again. So if you get your shoes as part of this bundle package, it not only saves you money compared to buying each piece separately, but allows you to do the same thing. You can have two sets of insoles and then one outer so that even if you wash your insoles and if you don't give them enough time to dry, you do it super last minute, you have the ability to wear your Mies shoes into work because you could just use the other set of insoles. Okay, I shared a few subjective thoughts already, but I want to give you a pithy bottom line here. And so disclaimer, caveat, whatever you want to call it, you folks message for shoe suggestions all the time. And I have never said one brand, I've never said one line, one material is right for everybody. You're always better off putting together a list of the features that you want in a shoe, finding a shoe that fits that bill, and then ultimately going and trying them on and budgeting at least 30 minutes to like walk around in them, do some squats, stand around and listen to the repertoire podcast. And then and only then will you know if that shoe is right for you. For me, the standard from Mies Footwear is an easy thumbs up recommendation when it comes to a lightweight, minimal, not hyper stiff shoe. There was effectively zero break in time for me with these shoes, which I cannot say about other shoes that have similar leather aesthetics. And in my experience, when I would try to go the non-leather route, try to grab a shoe that was made with like fabric or something else that also claimed to be non-slip and it was black, after a few weeks of wear, they would feel grimy and dirty because there was always too much fabric that they were made with and there was no good way to clean them. I know this product has been like four years in the making now, but they really got a lot right here in blending the best of both the fabric, the flexibility, the leather, the non-slip, everything. And the way that this fits my feet just works. Because I don't know about you folks, but I always feel like a weirdo walking around a farmer's market in my wooden chef clogs. Plus, it's pretty uncomfortable to do that if you do too many steps in those, if you're going on some uneven terrain 
rain, you're doing hills, you're walking in like a gravel based parking lot. And I don't have that feeling in these. Also, if you showed me these shoes without giving me any background knowledge, I would wear these for probably a whole week without knowing that they came apart. That's how sturdy they are when they are assembled. And believe me, I was ready to rail on that feature if it wasn't rock solid in these and I've been nothing but impressed. If anything, my biggest gripe is the width of the toe box. I've really done a lot of work over the last few years myself to buy more feet friendly shoes that allow my toes to splay out. It's not so bad towards the middle, but towards the top of the toe box, I definitely notice a little bit. It's not tight to the point of feeling constricting, but I just wanted to bring that up, which is kind of funny though, because I asked the team at Mies about this and they said that wide sizes are coming. And so it's just, they're constantly improving this product and they're really invested in making these great for us in the kitchen. While I'm spilling the deets, a white colorway is also supposedly in development. So those of you that have flower heavy work days, it's happening. You just need to stay tuned. I'm also going to be transparent and honest. I personally get enough buffer time in my kitchen sessions these days where I don't have to worry about having the foam expand again between days. And so for those of you that are in kitchens every day, Mies has been awesome enough to do a giveaway for you folks of an entire bundle in your size for one lucky person who is both subscribed to the channel, you like this video, and you leave a comment below. If you don't have a comment about the shoes, but you still want to be entered, we haven't done this for a while, comment below where you're watching this from. This can be the country that you're living in, the city, or even the restaurant that you're working at right now. I always love seeing where everyone's at these days, and we haven't had this question come up in a while, so where you said last time might have changed since then. We're going to be selecting a winner one month after this video goes live, so keep an eye out on the pinned comments below to see where that stands. Lastly, I promised a discount code. This is not easy to push for, so I really appreciate Mies for doing this as small of a business as they are. The first 10 folks who use the code JUSTIN15 are going to get 15% off their entire order. Mies has never done a discount that steep, so if you've been on the fence and you caught this video early enough, you're welcome, and thank you to Mies for offering that discount. If you missed out on the code, no stress. The link in the description will always have the most up-to-date pricing and any discount code for you. Like and subscribe. My name is Justin Kana, and I hope you folks have a good one. This video is giving me some empathy towards those folks that are in the foot picks business.